hope all y'all are having a blessed day. Boy, oh boy, it was a whirly gig today. Let me tell you, I only got a couple of hours sleep and I was very, very excited because my dear friend Kathy, she is a subscriber and that is how we met. She lives very close to Kansas City in Kansas and she decided to hop in her car and drive 14 hours through seven states to come and spend a few days with me. And not only that, people, look at this beautiful machine. She bought this for me as a gift. I am just so overwhelmed. I have goosebumps. It came in a table. Not sure I'm going to use the table, but it is absolutely beautiful. It is a zigzag. It does. It uses cams to make beautiful, beautiful decorative stitches. And it is it is a dream. I can't wait to start playing with this. We are here today to sew our rows together in our quilt as you go wonky log cabin. And as you can see from behind me, I did sew all the rows together. And if you would like to see how I went about doing that, please stick around and we will get started. A little intro to this video. Uh, you can see here that this is my lovely 301 and that lovely machine over there is my new white 1563. And the gal that brought it is right there trying to take the foot pedal out. <laughs> And this is my new sewing table. And I have to tell you people, this table cost me buco bucks. It was on sale. This shelf mechanism sucketh. I'm being honest. It, it's, it leaves a lot to be desired. There's a very thin little chain that holds the tray up and you have to take a screw out of the bottom of the table to make adjustments to it. And this is from Arrow called the Tasmanian table. Their solution to the fact that eventually that screw is not going to stay on the table and the chain is going to fall out, is to not just to set the chain height for your largest machine and then stack books under your sewing machine. Isn't that an elegant design for a $1,500 table? I don't know, you tell me people. I have rows one and two here. And just as before, we are going to put them right sides together. And remember that I have the pins here that mark row one and row two. One, one bed, two, two bed. And I am going to match these corners and I'm going to actually use pins. As usual, I am only going to worry about one intersection at a time. And then we're gonna go over to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew this together. And as you remember, we are only worried about sewing the top together first. So we're pulling the batting and the backing out of our way. And we are doing a quarter inch seam. I'm going to worry about the next intersection and that's it. Nothing else matters on the face of the planet right now other than taking care of this intersection here. And they nest nicely. Okay, now we're doing the next intersection. Again, folding all the stuff that we don't need out of the way. And I am nesting that seam. It works nicely. And this is the last stretch here. Now we go back over to the cutting table and we iron this out and start putting the other, the back seam and the batting together. I have just pressed this seam to one side, lying nice and flat. The seam is lying this way. So what I want to do is have this seam on this side. What I'm going to do is fold back this whole seam and pin it out of my way. And I think I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on this end. And then it's going to be a repeat of what we did last week. We're going to be taking the batting and overlapping it, cutting off the excess using the tape, the batting tape. And then we're going to be overlapping the backing, fusing it down. You can feel the edge. Now I'm going to trim that up. That looks like it's laying flat. So we're going to do a section at a time. And remember that this is nylon and if your iron touches it, it's going to get stuck to it. And because I have the backs pinned down, I am going to use a piece of scrap fabric to protect my iron. Now 
There we go, that's one piece done. And if you need to trim a wee bit more, you can. We are all pinned down and fused together. So now we take the pins out of back. We have to fold down a half inch and I'm gonna do it on this side. We're just taking our fusible and we are going to put it right on that little folded down edge that we put on. And now I'm gonna cut another piece and I'm gonna continue on. Now I'm gonna take this paper off here. Now we have everything ironed on. So now we're going to fold it over and we're going to make sure that it covers the other side and we're going to iron it down. And this is how you are going to do all of your rows and we're going to repeat the process for all of our rows. So as you can see I have the quilt finished and I have all five rows sewn together and I sewed them together the same exact way that we sewed the blocks together. They're just longer strips. I am going to do a colorful variegated thread and I'm going to do an all over squiggle. Going to be quilting this thing after the fact but that's just because I want to add the variegated thread and and just have some fun doing some machine quilting. And I'll be doing that in my new sewing table that you saw earlier. And you did see my lovely new machine here that Kathy brought me. Kathy drove f over 14 hours and over 700 miles and tra traveled through seven states to get here to see me. And I am just so thrilled and I feel so loved that someone would be willing to drive that amount of miles and hours to come see me. And on top of that, bring me this spectacular turquoise beauty. This is a white model 1563. It does zigzag and it has decorative cams that go in it. And if you don't know what that is, these little plastic things drop in the top and the different cams have different shapes to them and will produce those different types of decorative stitches. I can't wait to use that. I got to tell you, boy, this table, $1,500 is a lot of money, excuse me, $1,499 is a lot of money to be dropping on a table that doesn't adjust the way they claim it does. I'm very, very disappointed with the quality and the mechanism that they are using on this adjustable table. Having to stuff some quilt books underneath your sewing machine to make it the correct height is not a solution that a manufacturer should be telling you to do. Buy an arrow table with caution if you are looking for the adjustability because a chain that is screwed into the top is not a very, uh, is not a very robust method of changing the height of a sewing machine, especially the Bernina, which weighs easily 30 pounds, if not more. All things to consider when you're buying yourself a piece of furniture. That's why I I have been sewing on top of a dining room table since 1970. I want to thank you all so very much for watching. I want to thank you all so very much for coming along with me on this journey. And I hope that you will give this wonky log cabin quilt as you go project a try. It is lots and lots of fun and you get to burn through lots of scraps really fast. I just so love this technique and I'm really enjoying exploring quilt as you go and trying to figure out ways to quilt something while you're making it. This way you don't have to deal with a massive quilt in a little tiny sewing machine. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, please do click that like and do please leave a kind comment down below. It's the highlight of my day when I get to go through my comments. So thank you for that. I will see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio real soon with our board for this quilt. We're going to be doing a, a picket fence. So it's going to be triangle. And that's also going to be done quilt as you go. And once you sew the strip on the back, it's done. So then if you want to continue quilting, you can do that. If you don't, you are done. So I hope you have a very, very blessed day, a very, very blessed week ahead. And I will see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio next time. I love you all so very, very much. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.